Welcome to this Black Hat Fast Chat. I'm Terry Sweeney, contributing editor with Black Hat, and I'm joined now by Lori Smith, product marketing at Trend Micro. Lori, we're here today to talk about extended detection and response, or XDR, a very hot topic. Mm -hmm. Welcome to this Fast Chat today. Thank you, happy to be here. So as we said, this, this is a, 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 a very hot technology in the security space right now. Um, it's a new and evolving space, which can mean both market excitement and also confusion. Um, let's start by just with some definitions. Tell us, tell us how you define XDR. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It is a hot topic and many people are talking about it. And you know us marketing folks, we like our terms, but um, but really there's a there's can be a lot of substance behind uh, XDR. And I do believe that um, you know, real XDR um, does represent a positive and, and productive evolution in this space. And so XDR is really now considered an industry term and uh, often defined as extended detection and response. And so really it's a, largely about extending detection and response capabilities and processes past a single vector. And, and mostly that, you know, starts with endpoint. We've seen a lot of traction on endpoint detection and response. And this is really about the next step in that and applying the XDR type capabilities to other important security layers, whether okay. that be email or network or cloud. I see, okay. So from what you're describing, and I'm sure you've gotten this question before, but it sounds like this is um, very similar to security information and event management or SIEM. Mm -hmm. um, for, for those who are sitting with that question, do you think XDR is a, a, a SIM alternative or something that, that complements it nicely side by side? Yeah, and, and we do get that a lot. It's, you know, I'm, can't, why can't I do this with my SIM or this sounds like SIM? But for a company that is using a SIM solution, um, XDR does not have to be a replacement. And in fact, it can augment and enhance um, the use and the effectiveness of a SIM in an organization. So SIMs are great, uh, as we know, at aggregating logs and creating sort of central visibility um, to, to security information. But it, while great at visibility, not necessarily great at insight. And so, you know, it's not necessarily as effective at identifying and correlating multiple alerts as related to um, um, the same incident. And so, okay. so analysts still have difficulties um, sort of triaging everything that comes into the SIM to connect which to connect the pieces, provide that context. And that's where XDR comes in, right? It can help security analysts understand um, what matters most and then identify the core events and then ultimately do a deeper investigation and response. And that's really the foundation of XDR is that correlation, right? Taking okay. some piecemeal, you know, sort of fragments of malicious activity and tying it together to understand a full attack path. Okay, so SIM, while uh, uh, sophisticated and, and comprehensive, um, doesn't have the, the intelligence or perhaps the sophistication that XDR has. Is that, right. is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. And it's really, you know, you know, when a security analyst or a SOC analyst, you know, is faced sort of this abundance of alerts from the SAM, you know, they struggle to sort of quickly and effectively weed through the noise to find the critical events. And that's where, where XDR comes in as sort of, you know, the correlate multiple low confidence activities and um, alerts and you know when coupled with other information identify the malicious activity which you know so does that work for the analyst rather than trying to you know to piece it together themselves what security layers or integration points do you think are, are most important where, where xdr is concerned i'm just curious where you think companies might be able to start and expand if, if they're looking at the XDR concept? 
Yeah, and as we talked about, you know, most people are, you know, start from the endpoint. You know, we've seen a lot of adoption of endpoint uh, detection and response. And, and so clearly, you know, EDR has provided tremendous value. Um, and, uh, um, but despite the depth of capability, really, it still just looks at managed endpoints. And so that limits the scope of what they can detect and you know limits the view of um, who and what else is affected and so um, so sort of that's the motivation to go beyond the endpoint where we're finding a natural next step is email um, given that's you know the number one attack vector i don't know it's 90 plus percent of breaches start with email um, um, it's a it's you know a prior i would I would say a priority expansion point for for uh, detection and response, right? Because email threats um, don't often impact the endpoint until a user does something, clicks on you know a link or you know opens a um, a, a attachment, and so there are plenty you know of sort of undetonated. Um, um, you know, malicious emails that could be sitting in people's inboxes undetected. And so being able to take an endpoint detection and tie it to the originating email, then be able to search all the inboxes to see if that resides in any other inboxes, quarantine that, removes the thread and stop the spread, extremely valuable. So that's one area. Um, obviously network too network and email you know that's also a natural um a natural connection because well edr can look at managed endpoints plenty of endpoints aren't managed we've got iot we've got you know unmanaged devices like contractors so that networking um, endpoint is also important and then i would say cloud and server workloads, I mean, critical to the operations, must Absolutely. have a detection and response capability. So something that's very deliberate and specific to servers and these new cloud models is also important. And I mean, really, it's the more sources, the more opportunity for, you know, correlated detection and investigation and response. Thanks for that. Uh, to wrap us up, how, how does an XDR approach make the security analyst job easier. Yeah, so I'm I'm not so naive to think a security analyst job is ever going to be easy. I'm I'm blown <laughs> away on a daily basis of what this role does and can do. Um, but I do think that XDR can ease pieces of 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 the role and and can sort of create added value to the contributions that uh, security analysts can make and so you know what we're seeing is that security teams uh don't want to or simply can't hire the security analysts um, that they need and um and so they're looking for ways to optimize um the existing staff's capabilities. And so that's all about streaming, streamlining workflows, removing or eliminating or speeding up manual steps, enabling better analysis. And that's what XDR does, right? It takes like a SOC 1 analyst and facilitates, you know, their ability to more easily and confidently, you know, determine what's important and needs attention and escalating. And likewise, takes a SOC two or three um, analysts, and you know where they're responsible for the investigation and resolving incidents. Um, it can simplify their work in determining root cause analysis, the full execution profile of the threat, uh, what is the spread and the impact of this complex attack, and so they can respond more more quickly and more completely. So so really, you know, I believe XDR, the, the, the goal is really about um, maximizing the security analyst's um, contributions and improving the effectiveness and even the maturity of the security operations overall. Lots of food for thought for uh, enterprise security management. Lori, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, it's been fun, I appreciate it.